Today we are going to make a Filipino dish. I had told you that I was going to try to keep you up abreast on Matthew and Alana's world travels and um, Gary can tell you more about a lot of the detail but they started out in Tokyo, Japan on September 19th and they spent a week or so there and then they went to Kyoto um, what they did find was, you know, when you read about all of the, the, the massive numbers of people and the crowded streets and the markets and things, that's totally true. Um, they took lots of pictures. They've continued to um, update their Great Big Globe website, which is really fun to watch and um, see the new experiences, you know, that they're enjoying. Um, they found that Tokyo and, and Japan in general is very expensive and the uh, room that they had was very tiny. I think Matthew said when he stood up he could reach you know, from the, the wall basically to the door that it was very narrow, very small. And, um, and he found the same then as after they left um, Kyoto, Japan, they went to Seoul, Korea. And they found kind of the same. It was very crowded. Um, the, the various places they went to were, you know, very crowded and everything. Um, but just really enjoyed a lot of different experiences. The, some of the foods that they had were um, different, you know, from what we're used to in, in the United States, which has been a, a big thing that they have really wanted to experience, a lot of the local cooking and, and different things. So. Um, um, they went from uh, Tokyo to Korea and then to the Philippines, which they found to be just really enlightening and beautiful. I mean, all, all of the, the landscapes that they've sent back and the beaches now that they've been able to enjoy and um, the food has, has been, um, a, a lot of the food has been very unique to what they've been used to eating. Um, so I'm going to uh, show you one of the recipes that they actually had, and it's called pudo. Um, uh, it's typically made with rice flour. It's a, a very old uh, type of food that is, is a, a custom in the Philippines. Um, you can serve it warm, or typically you serve it uh, cooled. You can have this with coffee and or hot chocolate. You can have it as, as a dessert. Um, you can have it for breakfast. So there's just lots of, of different ways of, of eating this. So when you look at it, you're going to think it looks just like a muffin or a cupcake. But the texture is definitely different. It's very dense and um, almost pasty, Gary said. So uh, it's very easy to make, though. So this is what we're going to do. I actually cut the recipe in half because the steamer that I'm going to use, you can actually only get five cups um, in, in the steamer at one time. So the recipe, when um, use the, the recipe, it calls for making 20 to 24 cups of poodle. So we're gonna just cut it in half. So we're gonna start with one cup of flour, a half a cup of sugar, and keep in mind, as I said, this is actually half of what this recipe calls for. One and a half teaspoons of powdered sugar. <clears throat> and then I'm going to sift those. I, I watched a YouTube video and oftentimes when people are using a sifter, what they will use is this very fine colander sifter type thing, but I use kind of my, my old styled sifter. Um, so then you can whisk this around a little bit and then we are going to add, um, the recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of evaporated milk. The typical recipe, if you're making it Filipino with the, the rice flour, calls for uh, coconut milk instead of evaporated milk. The whole recipe calls for a, one egg that's slightly beaten. So I'm going to put in just a little bit less than one egg. One thing I notice with eggs, when I grew up on a farm, the eggs were huge and, um, and were so good. But now lots of times the eggs are, are a lot smaller, so it's a little bit harder to determine, you know, if it calls for one egg if it's really you know the right amount or in 
this case, when I'm using a little bit less than one, if I put the whole egg in, you know, maybe it would be just right. Anyway, but that's okay. Um, and a half a cup of water and two tablespoons of butter. So we're just going to whisk this until it's smooth and no lumps. And the recipe also, you know, says that if you think it's too thick, you can always add a little bit more water to your batter. But it does come out, you know, fairly runny. And it was also interesting because with the, the recipe I was, was looking at, it called for using a steamer. And that's the real difference in having these come out kind of dense. Um, because of them being steamed rather than, than just baked. And it um, said that you should use silicone uh, cups, like your um, cups for, for your, like your paper liners, but they said to use silicone liners. And I had never used silicone before, and it's really interesting um, to, to use these. You don't have to butter them or anything, and you um, can, can pour it in, and they will turn out just right. The recipe I was just reading this morning, it was, was kind of cute. It, it said when the, the, your, uh, your, pu your pu uh, pudo is done, you can take them out of the sillies. So I assume that was short for silicone cups. Now the steamer I have is an electric steamer. So I actually got it started. I tried making these for the first time last night and it takes, it took about 10 minutes for the, the steamer to get hot because you put water on, on the bottom of the steamer. So I actually have that started um, now and it's all, the steamer is all set to go. Okay, I'm gonna open it up. Now on the inside, this steamer has a plastic container and it says to put in about one and a half cups of water. And quite a bit of that water has already evaporated, so you want to make sure that your water does not evaporate. So I'm going to add some more. Okay. And the recipe also indicates that you should not have it against the, uh, touching the sides especially if you're using something that's not the silicone. I think I can actually get one more cup in here. I don't know, we'll just do five. Then we're gonna put this down and they're going to bake for about nine to 10 minutes. And while they're baking, I'm going to cut some cheese to put on top of the poodle. Okay, this is the part that Gary thinks is really disgusting on this, but this is what the recipe calls for. So you can either use like regular cheddar cheese, and if you use the regular cheddar cheese, I was just reading another recipe this morning, then you would put the, the, uh, a little square of cheese right in the middle of your, your cup before you steamed it. But if you use the already uh, soft melting cheese, then you're gonna put that on your poodle when it um, has baked for about nine to 10 minutes. And so we're gonna cut these in like little strips. It was interesting today because it, it just happened that Matthew and Alana um, FaceTimed us and I had sent them uh, a picture of the poodle and I said, so how did this turn out in comparison to what they had? And they said it, it really looked just like theirs and they wanted to know how it tasted and you know we, we kind of explained how it tasted and it also tasted exactly like theirs. So I was happy at least that the recipe you know seemed to turn out as it was supposed to but Matthew of course having been used to nice desserts growing up and so forth um, it was a little bit of a disappointment because that's the one thing they have found is many of the desserts are just not like they have here. Um, Gary, if you want to join me, you can kind of chime in. 
a little bit on you know some of the experiences. I kind of talked about how Matthew and Alana started their trip in Tokyo okay. and then Kyoto, right. and some of the fascinating things that they found would be. Oh yeah, like when they were in, well, after they left Seoul, South Korea, they headed down to the Philippines. And they went to this, uh, I think it was in the northwestern area of the Philippines. There's hundreds of islands in the Philippines. But they were in this uh, more of a isolated area and uh, they were snorkeling and some, some reefs over off the beaches there. And they also took a couple of day trips on these boats and the, these boat rides. There were probably boats that get like 20 to 25 people and they would cook the, the, the boat and the crew uh, would cook lunch for them and they had drinks on the boat for them and then they would go from island to island and they were beautiful islands. The area was called El Nido and I'm thinking that's like several islands in a group that's, that has that name and they, uh, they took lots of pictures and if you go, on, if you go online you can find them on uh, www.greatbigglobe.com you can see some of the photos that they took and posted. So. Uh, but they just enjoyed it, and in fact, they went on, they called it, they have tours A, B, and C, and they took tour A one day, and, and then they talked to some other people that were, they were hanging out with one night, and the, some people in the group there said, oh, you got to try tour C, and so they did the tour C, and they said, if you ever go to the Philippines, you have to go to the El Nido area and take tour C, because they, they went to like six different islands and just did a, a variety of, of sightseeing, and it was just fantastic, so... Now fast forward to uh, current, which is whenever you watch this, it may not be current, but they're in uh, the island of Bali right now, Bali, Indonesia, and they're in a little remote village, and uh, it's right on the beach, and of course it's a small little island, so but anywhere you live, you're near the beach, and uh, they're just loving it there. Uh, they're, they're helping people, they're teaching English in the evenings after people are done working. They, they have like little sessions set up where um, in fact, people just like Matthew and Alana that are tourists from America, they'll have them, if they want to, and they volunteered to do this, is to teach them some English. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are just very gracious there, and they said they just they can't believe how friendly and gracious the people of Bali are. It's a wonderful island, and they're going to be there another two weeks yet, so they're going to immerse themselves in, that, uh, in the culture of, of relaxing on the beach. Not a bad Way yeah. to be immersed. Um, a big thing that they um, have talked a lot about is, I, as I mentioned, how expensive it was in Tokyo and Korea as, mm -hmm. as well. Right. Um, and just kind of the opposite in the Philippines, just very reasonable prices. Mm -hmm. And then even the, um, the accommodations. They uh, had showed us the smallness of the room. They actually had bunk beds right. in their room in, in, in Japan. In Japan. And now in the, in the Philippines, while they were there, they had a, just a beautiful, a, like an apartment, a yeah, small apartment. Yeah, it was like apartment. an apartment with a balcony yeah. and everything that could stretch out. And now that they're in Bali, it's even more spacious. Uh, they even and have very air inexpensive. And very inexpensive. Yeah. I, think they're staying, I think they're staying seven days in this one villa for $200. And they have air conditioning, and they have their own shower and bathroom, which is really unusual because where they were staying in these apartments but in the past, that in Tokyo and in, uh, and in Seoul, they were sharing a, a, the restroom, the accommodations down the hall. Everybody had to share the same place. So, so it is, uh, it's a different world out there, and they're really learning a lot and yeah. enjoying, their, enjoying their trips, their trip, and uh, learning, uh, learning uh, the cultures of different peoples and everywhere they've gone they've just it's been very friendly the people just are accommodating to the people to the to tourism and tourism is a big industry for most of these countries especially the Philippines and now in Bali so that's what they do for a living yeah. and it was interesting when they called you on your birthday um, we were sitting in our car we had just gone shopping for some groceries and they were doing a FaceTime with us and uh, Alana said Oh, that's really funny. You got your winter coats on. <laughs> yeah. It was 31 degrees here, and they, it was 85 um, there. 85 there at, at 10 what, p.m. 10 p.m. that yeah. that evening because yeah. they're 14 hours yeah. different from us. Yeah, they're very near to the equator, so they're they're uh, daylight hours. I think they're like eight eight degrees south of the equator, and their their daylight and evening times are about equal. So you have, I think it was like, I think they have 11 hours of nighttime and 13 hours of daylight where they are at this point in time yeah. right now on their trip. So. so I am going to get back to my poodle and see if it's time to 
put this wonderful cheese mm -hmm. on top. So <laughs> let's go see how they're doing. I think she didn't mean wonderful, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, the recipe, one of the recipes said to add the cheese with about a minute or two left. So I'm going to see how this is going. And if you have a steamer, this is all digital, it's a bon appetit, um, and it's very hot. So you want to be very careful that you don't burn yourself. So I'm going to open it like that. Um, and this is pretty much how they're supposed to look. Um, they can also have a split in the middle when it's time to add the cheese, but we are just going to put the little cheese on top, like so. And one of the recipes you read, you can also put coconut on top. Right. It said when you take them out, you can put shaved coconut. You can, oh, this was, I thought would be kind of amusing too. Um, you can also put food coloring in. Oh, yeah. So you can have different colored, you know, uh, pudo, you get purple or yellow. They said lime green. Those are some of the more popular mm -hmm. colors. So I thought that was, was kind of interesting. Or black for an older person's birthday. Yeah, for a belated birthday, we yeah. could do some, some black pudo. Sure. So, sure. In fact, I wish that I would have done this maybe for your, your birthday. I should have done this sooner, mm -hmm. and we could have had some pudo at your party. And then yeah. people could have let us know whether they liked the kind of bland pudo versus the carrot cake and oh. your yellow cake and yeah. cowboy cookies. So yeah. next year. Next year. Next year we we'll do that. Have to do that. We'll yes. Have, and we'll have a poodle party. And I'm thinking by the time we do this again next year, Matthew and Alana will be home. Mm -hmm. And they'll have lots of new recipes, yeah. I'm sure, right. for us to, to enjoy. But and we'll have see fresh beer on. though. We won't keep the same beer for the, true. the yes. following year. Yes. Right. Okay, we have about a minute to go, so okay. this should be just that, about done. That so let's just see how this is. cheese goes very fast. I think you're ready. Oh, oh yeah. yes, Perfect. it is. I don't know if you want those or not. Well, actually, when I tried this last night, I am just going to unplug that for the moment and take these out. They are very warm. And if you look online, that is pretty much exactly how they're supposed exactly to look. Exactly how they look. Exactly. And now I'm going to show you how they're not supposed to look. So last night when I was trying these, my first batch, and I put the cheese on top, and I left put it them in for, in five minutes. for I think five minutes. <laughs> so they were completely covered. But that is not how they're supposed to look. Correct. So this is actually how it's supposed to be. And we're just going to put these over here and use this other plate. And it says to just let them set for a couple of minutes and then you can remove them from the sillies. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a kind of a cute name? Sillies? Sillies for silicone. And they really pop right out. Which I think is really cool. I had never used these um, for making any other kind of cupcakes. So I may have to do that from now on mm -hmm. and see how they turn out. Although these, as I said, you can kind of tell by when I'm bringing these out. If this was a typical cupcake, they would be pretty much falling apart. Falling apart, right. But because these are, are dense and, and, did you talk and about spongy, they're supposed to be spongy <clears throat> and have kind of a glossy top. Mm -hmm. And did you talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, about rice flour? They're really, they, right. they're called, they're, they can be called rice cakes. Different than the rice cakes we know of, but these, uh, if you use rice flour, they're considered a rice poodle. Right, exactly. Rather so like, like I said, the, the recipe that I found online, could um, you could add rice flour and coconut milk mm -hmm. instead of the, the evaporated milk. So this is a little bit of of uh, Matthew's travels little, to little the Philippines, of their travels, right? and we, we're hoping he actually he um, in talking with him on your birthday, he said that with being in Bali, they're going to be going to somebody's house, and they're going to be actually doing a cooking show. Yeah. So, so we're be, gonna and they're gonna, gonna try. They're gonna get that film, yeah. and they're gonna send it to us, and, and maybe we can kind of have it integrated, edit it, put it together, we can and cook at the same time. 
There How we go. Cool would that be? That would be very cool. Yeah. We would love that. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this this episode of a slice of heaven and a little bit of uh, ethnic food from the Philippines. So until next time, happy cooking. <laughs>